Here's a lesson on the ambiguous case of sine. Let's say you're given two sides and the angle opposite from one of those two given sides in a triangle. There are many scenarios to consider. Now let's say you were given angle A, side A, and side B of a triangle. Normally, when given two sides and an opposite angle, you could use sine law to solve for the other opposite angle, so angle B. But there's actually one scenario, depending on what the measurements of these three given pieces of information are, where we might not be able to know the measure of angle B for sure. There might be two possibilities for what it could be, which makes it ambiguous as to what the actual answer is, which is why we call it the ambiguous case of sine. So let me take you through a few scenarios so you can see when we would have to consider this ambiguous case and when we don't have to worry about it. Let's start with these first four scenarios where the given angle, angle A, is acute. In this first scenario, here's our given angle, angle A. Across from that given angle, side A, if that side is less than what the height of the triangle would be, then we wouldn't be able to create a triangle. There would be no triangle that exists. And you can see in this demonstration, no matter where we swing that side A to, it wouldn't be able to connect down low enough to create a triangle that maintains that angle of A that's given in the question. And then looking at this second scenario, if across from this given angle A, side A is actually equal to the height of the triangle, then there's only one triangle that exists, and it's a right angle triangle. And then how about this scenario? We have our given angle A, and then across from the given angle A is side A. If that side is bigger than the other known side, so if A is bigger than B, then only one triangle exists. And then in this scenario, across from the given angle, angle A, we have side A. If that side A is bigger than the height of the triangle, but less than the other known side, then there are actually two possible triangles that exist. So if A is bigger than the height, but less than B, we have to consider the ambiguous case of sine. The ambiguous case of sine tells us that there are actually two possible triangles that share those same three pieces of given information. It could be this triangle or this triangle. In both of those triangles that I outlined, they both have side B, they both have angle A, and they both have side A, either side A in that position or in this position. But notice the length of those sides is the same in both of those positions. You can just imagine that this side can swing over to here and have the exact same length, but create a new possible triangle. And notice in those two triangles, so once again, this triangle and this triangle, even though side A, side B, and angle A are the same in each of those triangles, all the other pieces of information in the triangles would change. So for example, this angle, which is across from side B, so I'll call it angle B, is an acute angle in the big triangle. But when that side swings over here to create this triangle, the angle across from B, this angle right here, is now an obtuse angle. So angle B is changing, which is going to make angle C change, which is going to make the length of this bottom side change. Right in the big triangle, it's that long, but in the other triangle, it's that long. So let's start by looking at what's the relationship between angle B in the big triangle and angle B in the smaller triangle. Well, let me label that theta for now. And notice that this right here would be an isosceles triangle. This side length and this side length are both the length of A. So since those two sides are equal, these two angles would have to be equal. So I could label this theta as well. And then this angle and this angle are supplementary because they form a straight line, meaning I could calculate this side of the angle by doing 180 minus theta. So the measure of angle B in our first triangle, we would say that's equal to theta, and we could solve for that just using sine law. But if I wanted my second possible angle for B, this one right here, I would have to do 180 minus that angle theta that I would get in my case one. And it would be ambiguous as to whether angle B is equal to theta or 180 minus theta, which is why we call it the ambiguous case of sine. And before we actually do an example, let me point out one more thing to you that we haven't talked about what if the given angle is obtuse. If the given angle is obtuse, we don't have to consider the ambiguous case of sine because either no triangle exists or only one triangle exists. 
we're only really going to be focusing on this very specific scenario. So let me actually highlight that quick. And let's go ahead and do an example. And remember, in the example, we're going to have to consider the ambiguous case of sine. If the given angle is acute and the side opposite from the given angle, so side A, is bigger than the height of the triangle but less than the other given side. So if we look at this example that we have here, it says that in triangle ABC, we are given two sides, side A and B, and the angle opposite from one of those given sides, and then it says to find the measure of angle B. Well, if I do a rough sketch of this triangle, now notice that the side across from the given angle, this side right here, is 12, and the other known side is 17. So since it's less than the other known side, I may have to consider the ambiguous case of sine as long as it's bigger than the height of the possible triangle here. So I'll do a quick calculation to check the height of this to make sure that 12 is bigger than that height. I notice I have a right triangle here, so I can use SOHCAHTOA to do the check. Here's my given angle. I want the opposite side and I know the hypotenuse, so I would use sine. I know that sine of 21 degrees would equal the opposite side h over the hypotenuse 17. And if I isolate h, by multiplying the 17 over, I would figure out that the height is about 6.1 centimeters. So since A is bigger than the height, but less than B, we have to consider the ambiguous case of sine, which means this side right here could actually swing over and create another possible triangle that has the same three dimensions. I'll sketch that triangle over to the right. Notice in both of these scenarios, I'll call this one case one and this one case two. Both of these triangles have the same measurements for side A, side B, and angle A. But their angle Bs are different. So there's going to be two possible answers for what angle B might be. Let's work with case one first. In case one, when angle B is an acute angle, that's always what your calculator is going to give you if you use sine law. And remember when using sine law, the ratio of any side divided by the sine of its opposite angle is going to be equal. So I know that 12 divided by sine 21 would be equal to 17 divided by sine of its opposite angle, sine of B. And then we could solve for angle B by first doing some cross multiplying to get rid of the fractions. And then I'll isolate sine B by dividing the 12 to the other side. And then to solve for this angle, I would have to do inverse sine of this ratio. Let me make a bit of room to be able to do that. And using your calculator, you would get that angle to be about 30.5 degrees. So remember, this is our first possible answer for B. The second possible answer for B would be in case two, where I know the relationship between this angle B and this angle B is that they're supplementary, meaning they add to 180. So to get the other possibility for angle B, I would do 180 minus the first answer I got for angle B which would be 180 minus 30.5 degrees, which means it's about 149.5 degrees. These answers are both possibilities for what angle B could be based on the given information. It's ambiguous as to which of the two it is. So we state them both as possible answers. Let's try another one. Once again, I am given two sides and the angle opposite from one of those two known sides. Let me draw my first scenario and then decide if there are two possible scenarios for these given pieces of information. My given angle, angle A is 34 degrees. The side opposite from angle A is supposed to be eight. And the other known side, which it says is side C is 10, which would mean that the side opposite from side C is angle C. And the question wants us to solve for angle C. But are there two possibilities for it? Well, the side opposite from the given angle is eight, which is less than the other known side. So as long as that eight is bigger than the height of the triangle, then we would have to consider the ambiguous case of sine. So let me quickly check what the height of the triangle is. I know that sine of 34 degrees would equal the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse, h over 10, which means h would be equal to 10 sine 34, which is about 5.6. So yes, side A is bigger than the height, and less than the other side, side C, which means there are two possible scenarios for the triangles we could draw with these given pieces of information. So I'll erase this 
and go ahead and draw that second scenario. So hopefully you can imagine that this side length swings over here to make our second possible triangle, which I redrew right there. And now when using sine law to solve for the other opposite angle, which is angle C, it's going to give us the acute possibility for angle C. And then we'll use our understanding of these triangles to find the other possible angle, the obtuse angle for angle C. Using sine law, I know that eight divided by sine 34 would be equal to this side, 10 divided by sine of its opposite angle, sine C. And then if I isolate sine C, I get 10 sine 34 over eight, and I can get the measure of angle C by doing inverse sine of that ratio. And that's about 44.3 degrees. Now keep in mind that is only one possibility for what angle C could be. There's a second possibility. In this second diagram, this angle C would be supplementary with this angle C, meaning they add to 180. So my second possibility for angle C would be equal to 180 minus what I got from my first possibility for angle C, which means 180 minus 44.3 which is about 135.7 degrees. We wouldn't know which of those two possible answers angle C actually is. It's ambiguous as to which of the two it would be. And now let's move on to our last example, where once again, it gives me two sides and an opposite angle, but instead of just solving for the other opposite angle, it wants us to find all of the missing sides and angles of the triangle. Let me start by drawing one possible triangle that has those three pieces of a given information, and then we'll check if we have to consider the ambiguous case of sine. The side across from the given angle, this side, is 14. That is less than the other known side, so if it's bigger than the height, we would have to consider a second possible triangle. A quick calculation of the height, I would know that sine of 54 equals the height over 17, and if I multiply sine 54 by 17 to get the height, I get 13.8. So yes, this known side is a little bit bigger than the height and less than the other known side. So since side A is bigger than the height, but less than B, we have to consider the ambiguous case of sine. So I'll erase this information and draw the second possibility. I just have to imagine this side swinging over here and then having my second possible triangle look like this. And in each of these triangles, I'll label the unknown vertex, vertex C. Now focusing on case one, I could use sine law to solve for angle B, and that would look like this. I would do 14 divided by sine 54 equals 17 over sine B. Then I would rearrange that to isolate sine B. And then to get the first possibility for angle B, I would do inverse sine of that ratio which would give me an approximate answer of 79.2 degrees. So in my diagram, I could label angle B 79.2 degrees. But in case two, it's obvious that angle B is an obtuse angle. And the relationship between this possibility for angle B and this possibility for angle B is that they add to 180. So my second possibility for angle B, I would do 180 minus the first possibility I got for angle B. So that would be 180 minus 79.2 which would be about 100.8 degrees. So within my second diagram, I can label angle B as 100.8 degrees. Now, because in these two triangles, the measures of angle B are different, that's going to make the measures of angle C also different and the length of side C different. So in both of these cases, I'm going to get different answers for the three unknown pieces of information. Working with case one first, let's now find angle C. I know that all three angles in a triangle add up to 180, which would mean to calculate angle C, I would just do 180 minus angle A and angle B, which would mean that the measure of angle C is approximately 46.8 degrees. And then over in case two, if I were to solve for angle C, I know it'd be 180 minus 54 minus 100.8. So my second possibility for angle C would be 25.2 degrees. And the last thing I have to solve for in both of these possible triangles is the length of side C. We have enough information to do either sine law or cosine law to solve for that side length, but to mix it up a bit, I think I'll do cosine law. If I want to do cosine law, cosine law works when you know two sides and the angle contained by those two sides to find the side opposite from that contained angle. 
So to find side c, cosine law would tell me that that side squared equals the sum of the squares of the other two sides, minus 2 times the product of those sides times cosine of the contained angle. So I'll fill out that formula below. And then don't forget, this is what c squared is equal to. So after you evaluate that, you have to square root it to find the value of c. And if you do that, you would get an approximate value of 12.6 centimeters. So I'll label that on my triangle as well. Now that triangle one is fully solved, right? We have all the sides and angles. Let's finish off with case two, the second possibility for what the triangle could look like. All we have left in this triangle is to find side c. So once again, because I know two sides, and the angle contained by those two sides, I could do cosine law to find it. Cosine law would tell me that side c squared would equal 17 squared plus 14 squared minus 2 times 17 times 14 times cosine of the contained angle. So it's going to look just like this formula, except the contained angle is going to be different. It's 25.2 instead of 46.8. So I'll write out that formula. And then after evaluating this side of the equation, make sure to square root it to get the approximate value for the length of side C, which is 7.4 centimeters. I'll label that in my triangle. And now we have everything solved for in both of these triangles. And we wouldn't know which of the two triangles are the correct answers. That's why we call it the ambiguous case of sign. The triangle could have all of those dimensions or all of these dimensions. Hopefully now you understand when to use the ambiguous case of sign and how to apply it. Stay tuned for the next lesson where we look at proving some trig identities. Jensen Man!